Welcome to another episode of Design Theater. My name is Wes. I'm a freelance illustrator and concept artist and comic book artist. And today we're going to be looking at the artist Patrick Brown. And we're going to see what it is that we can learn from some of the illustrations that he's done. Patrick Brown has done a lot of really cool marketing illustrations for video games. And I, I think he's been working in the industry for quite a while. And so his, his illustrations have like a lot of storytelling in them. And because of that, I think that there's a lot to learn. And there's a lot of really interesting things to see about the way that he composes his image. So what we're looking at right now is a Last of Us image. And man, I just, I really, I really dig the way it is that he sets up his composition. So here you can see that I've, I've actually gone and I've drawn over this image a little bit with some red lines. Uh, to kind of show the way that the eye movement uh, it should be or the way it is that he keeps the eye movement from going off the page. So typically like if you have a character like this and he's pointing say the shotgun and he's pointing it off the page, generally um, you want something that you don't want to do that because then it takes the viewer's eye off of the page. But you can see from the way it is that he sets up his his lines and the way that these lines converge to one another, that uh, he's keeping the he's keeping her eye from going off of the page. So if we look over here on this left side, now we look over here on this left side, we can see that we have clearly the main focal point is Joel right here, right? We have Ellie, she's looking up towards him. This is almost like a triangular composition, right? We have Ellie. And then this, this line, her line of sight goes up to him. And then we have this other, other part of the triangle, which is this zombie over to the left, right? And so there's kind of like this triangle that forms the basis of, of the way our eye is going to move throughout this piece, right? So you could say, uh, if, if I think about where my, if I pull back from an illustration and I look at it just in the pure, shapes your eye goes straight to to Joel but then as you look at the image you want to naturally see where he's pointing the shotgun clearly he's pointing the shotgun at something that's off camera right but uh, in order to keep your eye from going off the camera we have this other zombie right here that kind of blocks the the shotgun from uh, just pointing you off the page and instead what it does is it loops your eye back around to Joel and we can start to see other details going on in the background when we follow this this loop. It's almost like we start here and we can go through here and then we catch this figure in the background. Um, clearly the dynamic is between these two and he, he puts the details in between the main focal points. So we can see, for example, that we have Ellie here and we have Joel. And in, in the middle of this line of eyesight, we have this other figure here in the background, right? Um, so that's a nice little like second read of information that we can gather from that. The other thing to notice is, is that uh, he also has a lot of horizontal lines and a lot of diagonal lines that help that help break the image up you know so you have these horizontal lines on the buildings back here you have them here you have them here and you have them back over here now uh, he he tries to break these horizontal lines up with some diagonal lines like on this post and on the no parking anytime sign it, and that adds a, a level of dynamicism dynamicism to the image. We can also see these same horizontal lines are in the shadows that the zombie is uh, casting and the way it is that those shadows connect to the silhouette of Joel, right? And also that his feet are pointing towards Joel. And you could say that the posture of Ellie, even though she's pointed away, her body posture as is, is in a position to where it is that she's almost turning towards him. She, she's, tr she's starting to turn her body towards him. Her momentum is going towards him. And their silhouettes overlap 
uh, with the two backpacks, right? So we have these clear-cut silhouettes of the figures. Um, and then, of course, we also have these diagonals on the ground. We have the diagonals of the shadow that Joel is casting, along with the ones that uh, Ellie is casting, and they're both pointing in the same direction. So every all these lines, and then also this car back here in the background, we can see... Um, you know, we can really think of all of these as like converging lines that are all pointing us back toward a central focal point that we want that we want people to look at because the focal point is where the story is being told. So the the story is being told between Ellie and uh, Joel here. Ellie has this look of of fear. She's not exactly sure what to do uh, because they're surrounded by zombies, and Joel has this look of determination that he's you know he's going to blast his way through this. Let's go ahead and let's look through some other ones real quick. Uh, this is Day Z. This is a Day Z painting that he did. Uh, again, you know, we could say that all of these lines, they're all kind of converging to our main focal point, right? And we can clearly see what our main focal point is, which is the, the main character here in the, front, in the foreground. Let's look at some other ones. Oh, this one's really cool. This one's Metal Gear. Oh man, I love his Metal Gear pieces. I think there's a couple of them in here, so we'll have to go through these. Um, but we can see that he organizes things in a... He's got his foreground figure over here. They're, they're very cinematic uh, because he always has something in the foreground, generally. And then he's got his mid-ground, mid which is our focal point. And in our focal point, we have the most detail, right? And then we have the background, which is, uh, this is Metal Gear Solid 5, so it's like all the background stuff, and then the figure down here on the bottom. This stuff has a lot of storytelling in it. Um, I really dig this. But this horizontal right here, it keeps our eye, uh, it, it pretty much creates this kind of silhouette. It helps create this silhouette, right? You got this silhouette that goes around them. Even the knife kind of points back towards him, right? Even the figure, the way the figure's laying on the ground, it's pointing towards him. This is pointing towards him, right? And then this is kind of creating this kind of like, it's helping create this silhouette. It's framing the character. Because that's what we want. We want to frame, we want to use the other elements in a drawing in order to like frame the actual uh, illustration or the main focal point. I mean he's got some really cool character design stuff. I mean this is clearly an older piece of his but I, I do love the the kind of cartoonish vibe that he has and he always has you know these he has a lot of perspective in his pieces right so we can see these you know if we take these and we draw these as ellipses we see they are like this, right? And yeah, he's he's got some good perspective. I think eventually I'm going to do some longer videos where it's going to be like an illustration masterclass, and I'm going to take a drawing and break them down. Uh, much more detailed and do more detailed studies of them, but let's go ahead and get through some of these other pieces. There's another Metal Gear piece. It's a pretty cool character piece. And I, I like looking at a lot of a lot of people that do things differently because you know if you look at the if you look at the same stuff all the time, you start to get this idea that there's only one way to do it. Um, but there's so many different ways to draw and to tell stories. So, you know, we look at the, the evolution of an artist here, too. You know, we see this very stylish, very angular uh, drawing of the face here, right? And even these, these proportions on the arm, they just, they seem kind of, they seem uh, a little bit out of proportion, but it's cartoonish, so it works, right? Uh, and then you look at something like this, and this is like way more. He's got way more of a 
his, his style is like way more defined, right? So he's got this really dynamic pose. And then he's got these other figures that are in the background. Clearly we can see the who the main focal point is, right? And we could even say it creates a kind of a triangular composition like this, right? Between these different elements. And then you could say that, um, you know, you, your eye comes in like this, and it goes up, goes up like this, so it goes like this, right? It's another pretty cool one. Let's see what else is here. Oh, this is Bioshock Infinite. I love this piece. Um, I'm eventually going to do like longer, more in depth part of the video game videos. I'm, I'm going to do one for Bioshock Infinite specifically. That's one of the reasons why I really wanted to pick this because I, I, I wanted to talk about that. Eventually, I'm going to do. Uh, like a much longer video where I go through like the concept art for for different games and then I'm going to break down like the decisions they're making and that sort of thing. So if we're looking at this illustration, we can see that he's making a number of different choices, right? Like he's bringing in this, this strong sense of perspective with this back here as this skyline comes up and loops up. Right, and then we can see the. Sorry, I'm lagging here a second. Um, so we can see that perspective, and then we can also see this perspective that's coming in like this. And then we have these diagonal lines. So this this all helps makes it this all helps make it feel very dynamic. Any kind of diagonal lines makes an illustration feel dynamic. And so you want to think about whenever you're composing an image, how can I take the camera and how can I skew it in a specific way to where it is that I can catch the camera angles the way it is that I want to catch them in order to make the illustration more dynamic. Um, because it all, it all has to serve the purpose. If that is your purpose for an illustration, you know, if you're wanting to show a scene that's more calm, then you would have the lines be more horizontal. Whereas if you want them to be more dynamic, then you, you can have these kind of strong lines of perspective that are coming way off in the distance and then are coming forward towards us. And the figures are coming forward towards us, right? And again, we have that strong perspective in the, in the figure. Really strong dynamic poses. And then you have these these horizontal lines. Oops, I don't know what I just did there. And then we have these horizontal lines. And even the character itself is like one horizontal line, you could say. And then you have this kind of loop. And I mean, in a sense, you could say that this, this starts back here, comes up here, goes to her, comes to him, right? Something like that. And then these elements on the side of the background, these these uh, diagonal lines, they help frame the full illustration. So let's go ahead and go through some of these last ones real quick, and then I'll let you go. This is a cool one. It's an Uncharted. Another Uncharted piece. Yeah, it's another really cool one with that's got a lot of storytelling. You know, it's very similar to the last one. You know, we have. Uh, I mean, you could say this is a variation of the same thing, right? Everything is pointing towards Joel and the story that's going on with him. You know, we have this figure that's looking at him. We got this guy that's going towards him. This guy, this one is looking at him. But then you also have more subtle lines in the background, which if you think of the bottom of this frame of the car, it is converging towards him, right? It's a, it is a diagonal that is converging towards him because you can think about converging lines are just lines in the background or lines that are not obvious 
that all can converge at a certain point. Because again, design is, it's about organization. It's about putting things in their proper place, right? Um, and so you could also say the same thing with this body down here, right? Um, it tells another element of the story and we don't need a lot to flesh this part out, but it creates a nice silhouette that connects close to Joel's silhouette, right? Um, his leg is going up towards him. So this is kind of like the line of action that's going up towards him. Everything is pointing up towards his face and towards this, this drama that's going on here with him. You could even say this brick, in a sense, its line is pointing towards him. Uh, you could say the diagonal lines on the ground, they're all creating this, this kind of dynamic feel to it. Right? Even these lines are pointing down towards them. Right? So, very cool. I think we got one or two more here. Um, yeah, I, I like whenever he uses stuff like this. Whenever you, whenever you have something in the foreground and you can put like a motion blur on it, immediately it makes the image look more cinematic. So this image is very cinematic. Right? Very, very cinematic. Because you have this foreground figure that's blurred. And then we obviously we have John Wick here and he's fighting somebody. And we could say that again we have we have all these different elements that are pointing back to John Wick, like this guy's arm. We could say the gun is pointing towards John Wick. We could say that this line right here, another diagonal, is pointing towards him. We could say all these diagonals are, are really converging us towards this central point. Right? Same thing with these figures back here. So, or these down here. They're all pointing us backwards. Right? And then you can see this one converging line right there. So yeah, um, Patrick Brown, awesome artist. I'm going to include links to his work, his social media and whatnot in the description below. Make sure to check him out and like and subscribe. Let me, let me know if there's any artist it is that you would like for me to cover as I make these videos. I put them out daily, same time, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, thank you for watching and have a good night.